Hey legends, and welcome back to the least knowledgeable sim racing channel, where after a month of chasing various news cycles, we can finally get back to the content we actually want to be covering. In our 20,000 subscriber milestone video, I promised you that we would run a small series showcasing a bunch of free laser scan tracks available for R Factor 2, which would greatly enhance your enjoyment of the game. So here we are, in part one of our mini series, talking about free laser scan tracks available for R Factor 2, which should greatly enhance your enjoyment of the game. These aren't easy to come by if you don't already know what you're looking for, as many aren't listed on the official Steam Workshop. As such, I'm going to link you directly to all the tracks featured in each of this series' videos directly down below in the description. So be sure to check down there as well as ringing the bell to get notified of when we cover the rest. To preface all of this, it's fairly well-treaded ground by this point that R Factor 2 is a tremendously flawed game. I would not hope to champion it across all fronts and I certainly find it more than a little disappointing to have to continuously make videos explaining concepts which the developers should make self-evident to every player. That said, in this case the developers actually can't help you out because the meshes and data used for some of these tracks are sourced from, let's say, not entirely above board sources. No, I don't mean that the tracks will infest your computer with viruses, but I do mean that the meshes have been generated from data, which may or may not have been taken from other commercial properties without permission, and as such, cannot be acknowledged officially. Perhaps ironically then, the idea for this video series originated from a thread on the official R Factor 2 forum, so I want to thank everybody who participated in collating this list. Beyond that, however, I want to express an insane amount of gratitude to all the modders, programmers, and designers who work tirelessly and in many cases thanklessly for these amazing tracks. If you were hired by the developers and put your talents to use on padding out the official content of the game, R Factor 2 would be completely unstoppable. Before we proceed, I want to make a distinction about what I consider to be laser scanned. There are two broad categories of tracks being included here. When people colloquially refer to laser scanning, what they're usually talking about is a LiDAR-based ground scan, resulting in a very detailed point cloud which is then rarefacted into the more coarsely detailed mesh used to virtually drive on. This is currently the highest accuracy technology we have access to render tracks virtually. That said, it's still highly contingent on the developer how they go about rendering this mesh and how much detail they opt to discard from the original scans. It's generally well accepted that the official Studio 397 Laser Scan DLC tracks are some of the highest resolution tracks available on the consumer market, partly accounting for their absurd loading times. The second category of tracks are based on what people commonly refer to as LiDAR aerial scans. This uses a similar technology to the ground-based scans, except since it's aerial, it results in a lower resolution image, and as such, gives the developer a lot more license to fill in the blanks of the finer detail of the tracks. This is how most standard third-party modded tracks are done, and it's why many of them feel somewhat uninspiring through force feedback, as they tend to get the macro details more or less correct, but with no real rendering of the micro detail, which tends to form a significant part of the driving experience. The reason these are so common is that they're far less time intensive, costly, and much easier to come by for the average person. This video series will list tracks from both categories, but will always define which it is ahead of time, so that you can decide whether they're worth your time or not. In the case of the aerial LiDAR tracks, I've included only the ones I find well executed enough to spend your time with. We're starting off strong, so today we're going over Laguna Seca, Mugello, Bathurst and Road Atlanta, some of my absolute favourite tracks. The only track here which uses aerial scan data is Road Atlanta, which you can immediately appreciate based on the flatness of the road character. The great thing about Road Atlanta as a track is that it's so hilly and has so many macro undulations and camber shifts that it almost doesn't matter that the finer details of the track have been overlooked. All right, we've got Pitmaster Keith waving us down the pit lane of the legendary Laguna Seca. I almost cannot believe that this track is finally in R Factor 2. I was, I spent years hoping that Studio 397 would bring us an official version of this, but now I guess they no longer have to. This modder 
uh, and the programmer that work in tandem on these tracks are extremely good, extremely talented, so the AIW for the AI is great. You can have some insane races here. The mesh is of course, well not of course, I assume ripped from the original Assetto Corsa, so it should be very familiar to those of you who've played that game, which would probably be over 90% of you. Very similar to the mesh of ACC, so you can actually compare the two games directly. It's one of my favorite things about some of these tracks. We really get to put them side by side. R Factor 2 ACC, two of the strongest simulators on the market. One thing you're probably noticing is even with cold tires out of the pit lane, I'm putting the car basically where I want it. R Factor being an extremely dynamic and communicative game. At crazy time, it'll give you an idea of what you're going over. It's almost like it's revealing extra detail you never knew existed by playing this in AC, simply because the game is communicating so much detail to you. I had so much fun racing this. It's become one of my favorites. It's on rotation here all the time. Whenever I'm not making a video, I'm usually racing here. All right, so we're coming up to the end of the track. I'm getting geared up for my blazing hot lap. I think I was trying to set a qualifying time here or something like that because I was going to play with the AI. I thought I'd record it just for the heck of it. Turns out it doubled back for this video, so who can complain? So shooting down, breaking at the first board. It's so easy to feel what the car is doing in our factors. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, that is a turn that has obliterated me in other sims in the past, but I knew exactly where the car was going. Nice and easy on the brakes, pivot the car in. I mean, we're talking millimeters of positioning on the track, you know? I, I feel so confident to get the wheels out onto the curb knowing that the sand will just completely spin me out should I go over. The connection between the, the GTEs and this track surface is second to none. This is, some of the, this is one of the best experiences you can have in sim racing. Now, if you obviate the fact that the track, yes, looks very flat and unshaded, for some reason that's a characteristic of this modder's work. He doesn't seem to be very big on shading uh, or, or depth or, or anything like that, any kind of color grading for this because it all looks very flat. It kind of looks very uh, late 90s, almost like you're playing... Uh, what's that level? DE Dust in CS? CS 1.7? <laughs> oh, it takes me back to my childhood. Anyway, uh, this is free. I mean, you have no excuse. You've got the link down below. Just get it. Race it. Uh, Mark, the programmer, is absolutely amazing. So the AI will race the heck out of you on this. And yeah, grab it and have some fun because Lord knows... I certainly do, and you can see the times are very, very similar to ACC, accounting for the fact that this is a higher order of car than the GT3s. The talk of the town, Mugello, the track which hosted the mighty F1 recently. So I actually have no idea what that race was like. Uh, everybody said that it was going to be quite boring. I assumed that that was the case because the entire track consists of basically high to mid-speed sweeping corners and chicanes and basically all the stuff I absolutely love about motor racing but apparently it makes it uh, very difficult to overtake an F1 that way which I don't really care about because I don't watch F1 so ta-da here we are driving the Ferrari 48 GTE uh, me quickly looking back there obviously I'm racing a full grid I realized very quickly that I set the AI too low I think the AIW for this one needs a bit of work so I think I had the AI at, I think I had them at like 110 or 115 Possibly at 118, they will not race you that hard on this track. You may have to dial up the AI strength to 120. Hopefully the uh, the programmers work on it a little bit more. But the track quality is sublime. Once again, I believe a mesh ripped from the original AC. So if you've ever driven this in AC, you can now drive it on a vastly superior physics engine. Sue me. I don't care if that made you angry. So driving on our vastly superior physics engine, the first thing you notice is that this track is just amazing. Like the, the high speed corners, the feeling that you get, you know, with the, the tire slip right there. You can hear it really grinding away on the track surface. The bumps uh, and the curbs feel absolutely amazing. As you can see, I'm positioning the car exactly where I want it, maximizing every centimeter of track surface. And this was on the same day I'd actually driven the track for the very first time ever. So again, R Factor, very intuitive, amazing game to learn tracks on. and. Man, now you're equipped to, to drive so, so many more tracks on here. Mugello, 100%. Grab it. Grab it. It's down below.
Would it really be an Australian sim racing channel without a feature of Mount Panorama? I mean, come on. So, those of you who've played R Factor for a while will know that Bathurst was one of the older ISI tracks, at least I think it was ISI, pretty sure it was ISI, which was reskinned by one of the community members into Bathurst 2016 using real ads and all that sort of stuff, but with the same very flat kind of LiDAR based mesh that wasn't 100% accurate. What you'll probably notice here is that my car is really bouncing around down the straight, isn't it? Yeah. That's because this one's laser scan. Again, I think this may be lifted from AC. Or maybe not, I don't even know if AC came with Bathurst. Whatever the case, this feels like a ground laser scan version of Bathurst. You can basically tell the moment that you drive it. I mean, look at this. Ah, oh, the, the feeling of driving something as insane as Bathurst on a physics engine as amazing as our factors, it's like, this is the best part of AMS2 and ACC all rolled into one. Look at this, look at these undulations. Ah, oh, look at this, the cars fighting to maintain traction. The downforce and the mechanical group just fighting for it as the tires are budging on the outside. Now check this, I absolutely... Oh man. Ah, what an experience. I can just, I can re... I'm reliving it by watching this lap again. I absolutely love this track. Not just because it's here in Australia, but because it's patently absurd. I can't believe it's legal to race here. Like, look at this. Look at that. I mean, oh god, the R Factor, the time model is perfectly suited to this track. My god. Anyway. Uh, it's laser scanned, and as a result of that, the, the friction coefficients, the, the grip levels are far more similar to real life. The times are far more similar to ACC, so instead of, you know, GT cars being somewhere in the mid two minutes, sorry, not mid two minutes, it's like, you know, 205, 206, 207s, we're now getting into the, the low two minutes as these cars would be doing in real life. Now, I don't think it's quite as fast as it should be. I think there's a balance of performance still required for the GTE cars. They're not quite as quick as they should be, at least based on what I've seen in real life. But this is far closer. And once again, you can finally go toe-to-toe -to -toe with ACC and compare the two games for yourself. There you go, fairly mediocre lap, 202.8 at the time of my life. Make sure to grab it, have the time of yours too. Ah, so what's this? Do we recognize this? Nice Michelin ads. So this is one I only really learned recently. Once again, least knowledgeable sim racing channel. Of course, I didn't know about Road Atlanta <laughs> until recently. I, was, uh, I, mean, I knew about it before, but I've been watching the IMSA races here, which has been super exciting. I've been running mixed grids here in R Factor with the LMP car, the GTE, uh, and the, the GTEs and the GT3s together. Absolutely amazing. It showcases that some balance of performance is still required for R Factor. That said, this track is absolutely amazing. As you can see, that curb was not flat like the newer version of the track. This is the 2017 version of Road Atlanta. It's LiDAR scanned by the feel of it. There's no real um, fine detail of the surface texture. You're just getting the macro undulations, but the track is so insane that that is kind of enough. You can get the experience of driving at Road Atlanta, even with this kind of a coarse rendering. Taking it nice and easy, of course, because this is my little outlap to warm up the tires and the brakes. Road Atlanta is not one where you want to push it before your car's ready. As you would probably know if you'd watched the IMSA race here recently. I still can't believe that they actually put prototypes on this thing. I just can't imagine what level of insane you have to be as a driver to actually commit to that. So hard braking zone here, jumping into a sort of a low to mid-speed chicane. Love the curbs on this track, so chunky, so wide. Flat out over the blind crest. <laughs> Still flat out over the long right hander, coming across the final stretch, and this is where things get really fun. All right, we're gearing up to our final lap. Look how late this brake zone is. Drop a gear, come in, rely on that insane mechanical grip and tire flex to, to glue you onto the track. Our factor being extremely good at that, of course, coming down second gear, just munching that curb. We're resentful of the fact that it exists, it shouldn't exist, it's been chopped in real life. Flat out through here, early on the brakes. Absolutely cut the track, because uh, apparently track limits aren't really a thing <laughs> on this one. I don't know if they've programmed any in whatsoever, but that's our gain, not our loss. We're coming up to what I think is the slowest turn on the entire track. Still very cool. Very kind of long, very wide. This, this is a very 
There's something about this track, you know, it has that American thing. It's always expecting you to go flat out and get two wheels out onto the grass or the dirt and just... It's just crazy. I mean, you're basically going straight down, facing a high-speed chicane and just, like, being expected to plant the accelerator. Love it. Absolutely love it. And very short laps, of course, as you can see, we're already coming up to the end of the track. And I'm already disappointed that this video is drawing to a close, but that's Road Atlanta. You can find this one on the Steam Workshop. Don't need to go anywhere esoteric. As you can tell, the times are still a little bit off for the GTEs, at least for my tuning. I've not been able to match them to the real life ones. That said, you still get an absolutely amazing experience driving that track. In fact, all the tracks we've covered today so be sure to join us for the next installments. I think there should be about three or four of them in total for us to cover all of these tracks in good detail. Hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. Make sure to grab the tracks down below. Have a bunch of fun. Hit the sub. Hit the bell to be notified of future uh, instances of this series. And until next time, we'll see you guys later.